Well, hello folks, uh, my name's Ian. Of course, you're welcome to be shedding all this lovely copper goodness. I've really only revisited this uh, Heliax strip. It really, just to share information, to for Shirk Scrapper mainly. He emailed me and uh, didn't ask me anything, but said like a very, a very opportune video, seeing that uh, he's... He's dealing in a lot of Heliax lately. So I just probably it's really just to show what I've learned. So let's put you back up on the uh, tripod. Oh, I mean, it looks good. I don't think there's going to be a lot of weight in it, but that is the reason for this video. I'm actually going to weigh the copper content off a certain length. Now, if I choose metric, that's easy for me. It's a metre. Just measure a metre out. Weigh it. Shirk's over there in uh, Florida. Florida. Which is more likely going to be a yard. Uh, a yard is 36 inches. A metre's 39 inches. Oh, it's three inches between friends, should we say. <laughs> it could be quite a lot, really, couldn't it, really? Uh so, I'm just going to talk about this, then I'm going to weigh some. That might put some of you off. If that's the case, you better just hit that thumbs up, like, now and quit. Uh, do I do it now? Yeah, I'm on here. Best £5 I ever spent. So, it works surprisingly well. It can work better. Job, job. It worked well on, it worked extremely well on, you know, the big stuff. But it also worked quite well on the intermediate stuff. I'm going to say, I'm going to say I had three sizes. Large, medium, middle, medium size, and then a tiny size. And that's the medium size, or what you call small. This is even tinier. It worked even well on that. <coughs> That's why I'm going to talk about the saw in a second. You know, easy just. That's it. It's as easy as that. You know, I did it slow, really, carefully, for the uh, YouTube, without the constraints of. YouTube and the health and safety police watching. I was a little bit more quicker, more daring. Although I do like me thing, I do like me digits. They're very helpful, you know, picking your nose, doing all sorts. So I try not to lose them. Boosh. Right, go on, you've got the gist, just, you, you saw the video, just split it apart. Right, so, yeah, I can point you down on here, can I? Right, bring it in a bit. Right, let's talk about this all in, right. I had the blade only just up a fraction. Just just enough to, uh, so I've got it set so it just cuts through the plastic and just goes into the copper sleeving. And you saw it easy enough to, to pull apart. As I got smaller, I'm obviously getting closer to that blade. So I did have my piece of wood and that kind of worked. Right, now there was a lady, I think it was Laura, who said, well, why don't you get a block? Drill a large hole through it, and then shove it through the hole. So that block would be over the top. You just shove it through the hole. Your fingers go nowhere near the blade. Only problem about that one, Laura, is that it, because they're, they come in coils, they're not straight, and you can spend so much time trying to straighten them to put them through. Uh, 
There's a typical example. It, it, it just ain't straight. And it can take you forever just to try and get it straight enough to go through that hole. So you make your hole bigger to take it in account of the humps, the, the, the uh, valleys and the, 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 the hills, then it can ride up and you still don't get a clean cut. There is a solution to that. On woodworking saws, they have something what they call hole downs. It's not a clamp as you would think to hold something down. Uh, it, it, it's a, it's a, a feather board. So it's a piece of wood, piece of plastic, and it, lots of little slits in it. And those little slits act like fingers. And you can clamp it down, and anything you put in, which will like that. I'm gonna draw one. Right. If I, I tell you what, if I move this, this to that side, so for all the left-handers, it's the same difference. You know, I'm running the, I'm running the cable over the saw blade, but it, it's all it's all bent, and where it's bent, you don't quite get a full cut. Easy enough to finish it off with a, a razor knife, a Stanley blade. However, to overcome that, you can use what they call feather boards. These, this is a rough example, right? Plywood, usually, wood, springy wood, if you can. And these little fingers uh, allow some, some movement. And you put it that way, it allows it to go under um, and can actually force them back. And at the same time, it stops them, it stops anything kicking back because those little fingers dig in. So you could have that one over the top, set it to height. So there's always a downward pressure. And then you do another something similar. Well, it would be more like that. And that over the top. So again, it's, it's on a slighter curve. So it allows you to shove it in and these fingers will move forward. Now, I've, I've exaggerated these cuts. So that then allows you downward pressure and sideward pressure. I really had that little enough left to do. It wasn't worth the time for me to make these. I did try some other things. I tried, I did try it for a bit, putting some uh, clamps on just to give that pressure but in the end I just went back to my stick and a piece of wood marked it on the ear where the blades were kept the fingers away kept that over there. as soon as I got in on that side I could apply the downward pressure myself and control it that way but I'm sure you know a block of wood with a hole in, fixed. I'll do something similar. I'm not gonna dispute that idea. The other thing is, <laughs> there are some short pieces. And those were just too short for me to do that. So all I did there was get a pair of mole grips Clip them and run them over the blade, keeping my fingers away from that. Right, I'm just going to finish this, then I'll do some measuring and weighing. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> I just thought I'd show you this. Part of the deal was that uh, I put a new blade on it. So <laughs> it did this up. Got an auto catch lock. <laughs> uh, copper dust. Could I, could I get away with copper dust? Don't know. I suppose I better clean that out before I give it back. Oh, okay, Sharky, we've got rid of the saw. I've measured out a meter. That's 
39 inches, like I said, three inch bigger than a yard. I did get this, <laughs> but I don't normally use one of these as a rubble. Oh, groan. That, that, that was a bad joke, that was. I'm going to compact it, weigh it. I've also got the inner tube. I'm going to clean this up, and then I'll just give you uh, how much outer sheath that I got, how much inner eye core that I got, and I'll then I'll do the same with the thinner stuff, the medium size. Although I won't, uh, won't bore you with doing it. Probably shaking that to bits. Sorry about that. Let's fold that over. Get in that V. Pull it over again. Again. So, a little bit. Surprisingly heavy that. You got the gist. Only for you, shirt scrapper, am I doing this. Taking this form, form off. Now, people have said, try some uh, acetone. Well, nail remover. Well, I don't actually paint my nails much. I could ask every day, Solas. She, she does the nails. To be honest, she uses gel nails. I think she has to have something different. This is working. I could just use a, a grinding disc or whatever, but I would have dust flying everywhere. What I have found that does work is a is a wood paint scraper especially the uh the curved end bit that just peels it off Right, well, it's typical. The last time I used these, I said the batteries was low. Uh, so I've put it in and immediately come up low. However, I don't have any. But an old trick is to uh, put a bit of heat into them. Going on their own. Not trying to melt them or anything, just, just warm them up a bit. The uh, chemical reaction inside sort of revitalizes. warm enough I think them will be warm enough you don't want to over you don't want to overdo it right yeah warm enough all right See, working now. There's a little, there's a old-fashioned tick, tip and trick for you. Right, and we're going to do this. Side of me.
so we're recording now yeah zoom in on that so dear shark you ought to be able to do the math there and uh, work out what it is per foot per yard it's got to be very very close it's on, there's only three inches difference and I'll try and now convert that into English money. And zoom in on it. So I've gone on to uh, my yard's uh, Facebook page. And as you can see, uh, a day ago, they're giving £6 a kilogram for heavy copper. And uh, actually it says see more. Okay, so that well, six pound is good price. I, 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 it was only a short while ago I was getting that for bright, bright wire. So I, I've seen some were uh, again up to nearly seven pound a, a kilogram for uh, bright wire. So we're going off six pound a kilogram. Quickly doing the math on that then. Six thousand pounds a ton, a metric ton. So that's a thousand kilograms. So that's at six pound a kilogram. A thousand grams in a kilogram, divide that. So it's point double naught six P times the total weight, 235 grams. Gets me one pound 41 English money. If I get heavy copper at six pounds, but you can always vary those prices. You know, if I was to get five pound, you'd, re you'd reduce it. If I get 580, you can reduce it. But that's what I'm getting, Shark Scrapper, for stripping that Heliax, the large Heliax cable, £1.41, today's money, per metre, stripped and cleaned. I should get heavy copper for that, I should do. Right, I'll quickly do the other one and just show you the result. Okay, Shark Scrapper, so I've taken this medium sized not the large one again i've stripped it by a, a meter 39 inches and we got sixty five grams ah, zoom out oh, a touch okay and then it's got an aluminium core but for the elevate I've thrown that on and I've got 55 grams. Okay. I did the math. We know it's six pence. A kilogram. Or six pence a gram. So 65 times six is 39 pennies. Okay. For a metre of copper. Just for the elevate, I've thrown and weighed in the aluminium. I'm going to go for 800 pounds a ton, a metric ton, 1,000 kilogram divided by 1,000 is 0.8 per 80p a kilogram divided by 1,000 gives you a gram. Multiply it by 65, gives me 5 pence, 5 pennies. So per metre, I'm getting 39p, call it 40p, 40p a metre. Not shabby. And, and, and 5p a metre for the aluminium. Whoa, okay, right. Well, I found this on the floor, an unstripped piece. Right, uh, and it kind of went through my head. Well, it's all right me saying to, uh, to Shark Scrapper, uh, large and medium and small but just let's let's stick something on it anyway once upon a time cruiser mac sent me a micrometer and believe it or not cruiser mac it's the first time i've got the chance to use it so i've already played around with it and it's in imperial checking that out it's it's a smidgen smidgen above five so that's half an inch i know that because i've used a ruler to measure the gap between 
<laughs> and I know, I know that's not how you're supposed to use a micrometer. Like, uh, you do really, if you measure internal bores, you know, you put it in, set it, and then you measure that. It's kind of similar. Right, so, Cruiser Mac. Half inch diameter stuff. In English terms, gets you 40p a metre. And the large stuff gets you £1.41 a metre. You can do the math yourself and convert it into uh, Floridian dollars or whatever they call it. You know, whatever you use over the, over the you know. I believe all the igu iguanas are falling out the palm trees over there. It's that cold. Shazam! Oh, that didn't work. All it did was make the pile even bigger. Let's try again. I think this time you've got to stick your tongue out the side of your mouth and go... Well, with all that done, I've got to say, I'm peeling good. Yeah, we're going to we're going to end up because that's been a fair old uh, weekend of a of a play. So we're going to end up with this chocolate and orange stout made with chocolate malt and dark chocolate flavour. And this is a rich and smooth stout, uniquely lifted with orange finish and aroma so let's finish off with that and then uh, I can go and get ready for work tomorrow right peeling good Finish off with a head. And you know, I only did a tiny little uh, gift to the scrap gods in doing all that heliax. Well, look at that. That is dark, isn't it? Dark with a nice creamy head. You can't say won't you can't say much further than that, can you? Well you can actually smell the orange. Very stouty, very malty. It's got a chocolate finish, not bitter. <clears throat> Milk chocolate finish. Not unpleasant. I, could have, I would have that again. Feeling good. I can get it all in, can't I? Right, ladies and gents, that was for Shark Scrapper. Probably gone on way too long yet again. And I'll uh, I'll see you all. We'll see what the Scrap Gods give us over the next week or so. Although, to be honest, I don't want anything. I want my bench to stay clear. And I can get on with this table. See you all soon. You all take care there. Now, I don't think this will work, but I was asked in a comment, well, now you've stripped all that lot, why don't you make a copper block? Like, using that uh, aluminium squasher that I use. So, just for you, I'm going to try and make a copper block. I don't think it'll work. Because I don't... I think I'll just be able to compress it enough. No idea. Let's load it up. There's some bits. You reckon? There'll be a lot of woofing and puffing here.
<laughs> well, here goes nothing. I don't know. Look at that. It's like a it's like a bog ship. Resistance is futile. Hey, I quite like that. But it's hard work. Don't just, just don't come out with any ideas like that again, please. <laughs> 